Hey, so I accidentally took a little bit of a winter hibernation with this podcast, but I've got some things that I want to share, so I'm I'm back with a, another episode. Um, I guess I'll just start right off with things that are finished. Um, so one that I'm very happy with, this was start to finish in 2023, my, my first project of the year is this, which is, um, Herbivore by Stephen West. Um, and this is knit up in my Rambier hand spun. Um, it's a really sweet pattern. It, it really shows off like a variegated yarn really well. Like this obviously has a lot of stripes, but it's, um, there's like this big twisted rib triangle. And then you later on, you kind of build out these other ones and the way that the increases the shape, um, give it this kind of like hook kind of thing where it, it becomes like very easy to, to wrap. Um, like the other way around as well it just kind of like hangs very nicely over your shoulders um and yeah this is yarn that I um I spun from a nest fiber fiber club that I got and I really didn't like the colors I think it was the sunny side one it was like yellows and pinks and reds and just um not not quite me. So I over dyed it with indigo while it was still in fiber. Um, I just like dyed it up in different chunks and then spun it up into like a really nice like woolen um, two ply. And yeah, I, this pattern was really great. I had like a little under 500 yards. And so I went like I kind of just kept doing repeats until I was like close enough that I figured I could um, I like mathed it out so I could get as close to using all my yarn as possible and I, I only had like a tiny bit left which was really satisfying um, so this has been really great um, I finished this I think back in January so it's been really nice to have through like the the cold months and I actually haven't been doing a ton of knitting this winter. Um, I've just been like giving my time to other things, um, doing a lot of reading, doing a lot of gaming, honestly, <laughs> a lot of Stardew, and I've been reading this fantasy series, um, partly rereading and partly just trying to like finish it for the first time. And so yeah, knitting and spinning have, um, have have not been necessarily like my main focus and um that's been kind of interesting for me um the other thing that I have that's a finished knit of this year is um this little set of mitts um it's just garter stitch like very simple um this is mushroom worsted from um Starbath dyes and I was in the forest and had brought this yarn and and a set of needles just in case um and yeah it was pretty cold so I, I I worked these up by the fire and yeah it was really nice it was a really lovely time being there and um my phone was off for like four days um and that was just like really interesting to see after like just like how I felt after that time um and coming back like just interesting to kind of like feel out how I was feeling um I love how like earthy these are it's like a more crunchy wool and the colorway is just really great. I'm not normally much for orange, but there are certain colors of, or certain shades of it that I really like. Um, and because this is dyed with Kutch, um, and I, uh, I ended up with like on this part of my finger, it was like rubbing off, like kind of crocking off like indigo does. And it just felt very, I just felt like very embodied and like really nice. Um, and nice to do something like really simple that I didn't really have to like think about or pay attention to 
Um, and I, despite having been knitting for a really long time, don't have a lot of these kinds of like simple, warm things. <laughs> and generally speaking, I, I've been really focused on garments for the last years. Um, I think that's partly just because I am more skilled than I was, but also um, I've, I've had some, some like thoughts about like my relationship to clothes that have shifted and um, yeah, maybe I'll talk a little bit more about that, but um, I'm going to finish all the finished things first. Um, I had done some of this hand spun for, um, I did this hand spun for the Stephen West, um, MCAL and started knitting it and just like wasn't feeling it and unraveled, um, as I think a couple of other folks did as well. And I had half of this other braid spun already, um, but needed to do just like that last ply for this. And so I did. Um, I ended up, I, you might be able to tell, but the one, the second braid ended up a heavier yarn. I think I was just, um, ready for it to be spun. And so I spun it a little bit thicker. It's not a huge, huge difference, but I will probably alternate skeins when I knit just so it's not too obvious. Um, and... Yeah, I'm hoping to do A Poison Oak by Karina Spencer, um, which is like this, it's like a tunic. It can have short sleeves or like a three-quarter sleeve. We'll see what I can do with the yardage I have. I have like over a thousand, but I think only, like 1100 maybe at most. But it has this like, there's like a spine that's situated like asymmetrically. And then there's like a bias. It's meant to be done with stripes, but because I think this will be a little stripey as a hand spun anyway, I think it, I'm fine just doing like one yarn. And then it um, kind of like flares out at the hips. Um, and so I think that'll be like really pretty. And because it's basically just stock net, um, I think it'll like show the yarn off really well. Um, and so that's something. And then, um, I frogged a bunch of stuff recently as I've been kind of like reevaluating some clothes things and um, I think just like the desire to spring clean hit me pretty hard and so I wanted to like make space um, for for new shapes in my clothes and also um, you know, a lot of the things that I frogged just, like, weren't working either in the fit or, um, the colors. So I frogged this Ursina that had been in a light pink, um, I don't know if I shared that project on here before, but it was, um, the same color as my lizard, you know, who, um, died and that was, like, part of my mourning process for him. And... I was really happy to knit it, but found that that color is just not really something that I wear. And the fit was, like, not quite right. I've been finding the sleeves too short on some of the things that I've made. Um, and I typically have to, like, shorten the body and lengthen the sleeves on a lot of the things that I make just because of how I'm shaped. But I guess I'm not quite lengthening the sleeves enough on certain things. So I over -dyed these. Obviously, it's not pale pink anymore. Um, I used a Saxon blue, um, aquarelle, like, concentrate, which is a form of indigo, um, and there's some sort of plant matter in here, um, and then I used, um, pokeberries that I smashed up and just kind of painted on. It was a little too, like, solid of a blue, and I wanted something more tonal, so... The magenta of the poke blended out into these really soft purples and it's really pretty um and i really like it was richosaria vovo which is like a really nice base um i think something with a lot of texture will look really nice with this um 
because I think it's like a four ply or something. Um, so I have no firm plan, but I was really happy with this like little experiment. And um, I thought about using the same combination of things like the Saxon blue and the pokeberry to make like a Coraline colorway. Um, but this is a little more blue heavy, but I'm curious to like experiment more with that combination and see what I can get. Um, and then, yeah, I guess it's worth maybe talking about some of the other things I frogged. I had a Divine Exodus by Jameson Watts that I frogged that had been made with this, um, it's like a hand spun style yarn from Feederbrook Farms. It's called Entropy DK, I think. And I was like so enamored with this yarn when I got it because I didn't know how to spin yet. And I was just like, I mean, the colors are really, really beautiful. And um, I think the colorway is called like Dark Energy or something. I was also watching Sailor Moon, so I was really into that uh, like name in particular. Um, and the pattern has like a big box pleat in the back and I found that the weight of that was pulling the neckline up and like choking me all the time <laughs> and on top of that like the color distribution got a little wonky so this is now yarn again. I undid a garter stitch cardigan kind of shrug thing that I had made and got back these like berry colored skeins um along with some navy koigu that has been a couple of different things and i still haven't found the right project for it and this really beautiful skein of um malabrigo sock in potion um i'm really excited to turn this into something that i'm gonna wear like a lot more um and then the one that was kind of the hardest decision, because I, I have worn it a lot, um, and it's been washed a lot, was my um, Bessie Crop test um, for Jackie C's look. And some I was getting a little bit of tightness at the bicep that I wasn't loving. The bind-offs are pretty tight on that. Um, and... Ultimately, the reason that I decided to do it is because when I knit it, I needed an extra skein of empathy. I wasn't thinking about dye a lot. I wasn't paying attention. And there was this band of dark yarn in the middle of the top, like darker, with more light underneath. And I just always hated it. And it really bothered me that it was messed up like that. And so I decided to unravel it. Um, so you can maybe tell this is the dark skein and this is everything else. Um, this is like the perfect yardage to be part of another moon crush tank. And I adore the one that I made. Um, and then this, fingers crossed, I'm going to marl it probably with some lace weight and make a Chaco vest, um, which I've been wanting for a while and haven't quite figured yarn out on, um, that's the order that words go in. And, um, yeah, I think it'll be nice to do something with a plant fiber, even though I also, um, one of the things that also made it a little tough to unravel this is that my, it really hurt my hands to knit in the first place, partly because of gauge. So I feel okay about that, but it, it did in a way feel like I was just signing up to get hurt again. <laughs> um, so, yes, but I love this color and I think it'll be really nice in those two different knits. Um, and yeah, I think that's all the stuff that I frogged. It felt really nice. It definitely, um, I mean, it felt like recycling, right? Um, to just... yeah to like not spend money but to get more yarn back to use like just felt really nice and I definitely came back from the forest feeling like I mean I had been living 
for a number of days, just like very sparsely, like living in a tent. And so I came back and it was like the beginning of spring and those things combined, I just felt really overwhelmed by things. And so there is a number of yarns in my stash that have really fallen out of favor. <laughs> They're just like not as exciting to me anymore or I maybe had big plans for but I'm not interested in those projects and I'm like not sure what to do with those things. And so it was like a nice kind of like turnover and refresh to get some of these yarns back. And I am thinking of potentially like de-stashing a big chunk of stuff. Um, so I guess maybe keep an eye on Instagram for that. Um, and de-stashing much less in a, like, trying to recoup the money thing and more of just, like, I don't want this in my space anymore. Um, so definitely more room for people to, like, make offers and things. Um, but yeah, I have to, like, photograph stuff and whatever still. Um, and let's see, do I want to do new stuff or let's do whips. Um, I have made a lot of progress recently on this lace, which I've mentioned on here before, and I think I showed it in, like, the worst possible lighting, maybe in, like, my first episode, this shawl scarf thing. I probably explained it already, but you, like, knit this trapezoid this way, and then pick up all these stitches along the edge. It's, like... 300 and something stitches and then you knit lace um I finally finished one repeat it's like 24 rows a lot of stitches um I have a really love hate relationship with lace I have the memory for it but it's just fiddly Ugh. it it is looking really pretty and I am really excited I'm really only gonna do like another half lace repeat so basically you can kind of see these like little sections of eyelets. There's like one clump and then another one. So there'll be a third one and then that'll be the end. Looking at other people's projects, one and a half repeats seems to be like what I think looks the nicest. Um, I'm using a bit of a different yarn too. I think a lot of people, it calls for like a fluffier thing, whereas this is um, silk paca. So it's an, yeah, it's an alpaca silk. Um, I'm gonna have definitely leftover. So, um, this is Muka by Ari Shimizu, and I'm planning on making Bunrin, which is also by her. And it's like a there's a small lace panel, and then a bigger, um, it's a cowl. So, there's some lace, and then there's a bigger thing of like cables. And I, it is my hope that I will, oh yeah, I have the swatch up here of um to put these together this isn't really overexposed for some reason but it's like a very soft green i think these will be really pretty together um this hand spun is uh getting worked up on my antique wheel which needs a new drive band so that has been just like sitting for a really long time but that's okay because like this isn't done yet either so that has been, it's been huge to finish a lace repeat. When I was only a couple of rows in, it felt hopeless. <laughs> like, gonna be knitting forever. Um, it's gonna be, it's one of those things where I'm like, it's gonna be really pretty. I am not enjoying knitting it, also. <laughs> Whereas this has been a joy to knit and will also be very pretty. Um, this I have talked about before. It was in, there was much less, I don't know. I say I haven't been doing that much knitting, but then I'm pulling these things out and I have been doing knitting. Um, I guess it's just not having things that are fully finished. Um, maybe I should do what I did last year and just like finish all my whips and then have like fresh, new. The last time I did that, I knit a sweater in 12 days, so... Maybe that's what I need. Isn't she gorgeous? This is um, 
Koyame, Koyamai, still don't know how to say it. Um, this is the edge, look at that. So this is a pullover pattern that I made into a cardigan through the power of graph paper and math. Um, I will have a button band to do here, but I've been slipping my stitches. So look, this is gonna be so nice to pick up. And I'm like almost done with this sleeve. Um, I have long arms, so. Um, between that and the button band, I'm like a little nervous about running out of yarn. But um, knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in Dusty Artichoke. And also knitting for Olive, I think it's called Soft Silk. It's their Merino Silk. In Dusty Aqua together have been just like a dream. Um, I really did largely knit this to pattern. I'm making like length adjustments and stuff. Um, I was able to do the short rows flat and they turned out really, really nice. Um, the only thing that I've kind of, well, in addition to making it a cardigan, and I'm really not sure what I'm gonna do for buttons yet. Um, but there's this raglan increase that happens in the pattern. And I knew there's gonna be kind of a slight, you know, when there's like a bunch of increases in a row, there's like a slight line. But I decided to incorporate this mini cable that also borders this and actually is also what happens down here. You just do it in opposite, you just do it in pairs. Um, I decided to do that and do the raglan increases on either side of that mini cable, just as like a pretty little detail. I did it on the back as well. Um, so I'm feeling like very proud of the customization that I've done on this. This cable is also just like so pretty. Um, and I've never knit with mohair before and like, wow, I get it. It's really nice. It's gonna be really warm. Probably gonna be worn mostly next year. Um, and it is a little itchy, I think because of the mohair. So I'll probably need to wear like at least a t-shirt under it or something. But I'll be layering for the cooler months anyway. Um, I am using double pointed. I wasn't sure I was gonna like it. It does feel, I don't know, sleeves are always miserable, right? I should have done them before I did the body. That's what I've been doing on my sweaters lately. Um, one thing that's nice though is that the tension weird points of double pointed are actually really working for this in a way that I don't think Magic Loop would because this ladder, if it exists, will be on the underarm. And then these joins are both on the edge of the cables where the tension's like a little wonky anyway, as opposed to Magic Loop, which I find I get like, it's as if like you pressed it and there's like these tight little lines that I get on the edges. Um, I'm kind of a mad, I used to love Magic Loop and now I'm kind of a Magic Loop hater. But this has been like relatively slow going just for how thick of a yarn it is mostly, but I've been loving it. So I, I kind of don't mind. Um, also on the needles is this um, sweater I've been working on for my partner, which I've also shared on here before, made some serious progress on it lately. Um, it's very long <laughs> and it's in fingering weight. Isn't she beautiful? These cables. Um, I'm at the, um, armhole split. So I'm just working the front cable part right now. And then I'll have to work some reverse stockinette and then, you know, sleeves and things. Um, I did make a mistake that I chose not to go back and fix. And I hope that I won't hate it forever, but it's kind of in a, in a big thing of cables like this is kind of hidden. So you don't pretend I didn't even say it. Um, and the only thing I'm not looking forward to is I'm going to have to alternate skeins up at the top because the color I'm using, this is Malabrigo sock, um, in Aladdin, it doesn't have dye lots. And the skeins that I have are pretty variegated, so 
It's just gonna be annoying. I'm gonna have to like do sleeves and alternate skeins. But it's fine. Um, that has actually been, even though it's like all cable-y and everything, it's very simple. Um, most of the time you're just knitting and purling. So that has actually been like a pretty good TV project. So I think that's part of why I've been able to like make some progress on it lately. And then, oh yeah, I have a spinning whip in addition to the one that I'll use for bun run. I have this 100% alpaca that has been very slow going because when I set out, I was like, I'm going to make a three ply. I'm going to spin this as finely as I can. I'm going to do it on drop spindle. And I did not know when I set out on this venture that alpaca is really slippery. So it, um, I'm no longer doing it as thin as I possibly can. Um, largely because it was just like kind of painful to hold my hand in the position that I needed to to do that. Same thing with spinning woolen on a drop spindle. I find sometimes it, it I don't know if I just hold it weird, but I end up with kind of RMI stuff. But I have a turtle that's finished. I don't know if you can, can you see? Mm, I don't think it's going to focus up for me, but um, yeah, it's this really beautiful, I don't think it's baby alpaca. I think it's just alpaca. Gray alpaca in these like really beautiful sunset kind of colors. Um, I split the fiber into six parts so that I could have a three ply where hopefully the colors wouldn't like like I wouldn't have all like red in one spot. I tried to line them up so that they'll like blend really nicely. We'll see. I'm now starting the second sixth of my fiber. Um, but yeah, I've just found that with something really slippery, maintaining twists has been really essential. I think that's the thing that I needed to do to keep it going is just make sure I I am not not putting too much weight on fiber that does not have enough twist in it. Um, but yeah, I'm like, I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. I think it'll kind of depend on the yardage, but that has been another thing that's just been like happening slowly. And I think I, I, I have been thinking about my relationship to slowness in crafting and I am curious if anyone else has felt that has has felt a kind of like fast fashionification of craft, not just in the sense that like Sheen's like stealing designs or whatever, um, but. I feel like a number of designs that have come out lately are just hand-knit versions of fast fashion styles. Um, and I, I guess I wonder about like trendy knits um, and what their longevity are for us. Um, if we're replicating some of the like folly of fast fashion but just doing it in like a way that is ethical in terms of human labor and only that um i think that i feel a lot of pressure pressure i put on myself to be like making everything by hand but also like patterns come out faster than I can make stuff and I between changing like style just as like a human being pandemic transition like what I want in clothes is a lot different now and what I want in craft has changed a lot and because at times my consumption 
has not been as slow as maybe ideally I want it to be. I've kind of ended up with some things where I, I, I don't know what to do with them. Like, I worked at Mood Fabrics in New York for a while, and I had a really, really good discount, and I bought a lot of fabric while I was there. A lot of those fabrics, I don't even know what I was thinking about when I, when I had them, but I have them. They, like, live in a bin under my desk, or or yarns that I had like huge plans for and then found that like I don't like that silhouette. I don't like the way that that looks or feels on me. And now I kind of feel stuck with them. Um, and I, I think a lot lately about like consumption patterns and how How important degrowth is um, that it's not always about finding alternatives that like it is often also about just like consuming less um, and that's really difficult in a capitalist culture that I mean our production has in some ways become completely untethered to demand um, it's just really complicated, and I live really close to, or really close, close enough to the web store, and I will sometimes go there for the sake of being able to, like, touch and see yarns in person, um, from, like, a lot of different brands at once. But honestly, it's a really depressing place to go. Um, because to me, it, it, it rep represents just like consumption and like, um, what is it called? Stash beyond life expectancy. Um, and yeah, I guess I've just been those kinds of things have been on my mind a lot more lately and as I came home and found this kind of like desire to spring clean and to recycle back yarns from things I wasn't really wearing and I also I'm about to talk about like the acquisitions like whatever uh I love that that knitting podcasters are doing this or at least the ones I watch um, I had to buy yarn for a test knit, and I was so mad that I couldn't find the yarn that I needed in what I have, because I feel like I have so much. I know that I do, but I needed 2,000 yards of yarn <laughs> for this thing in a weight that I just didn't have that yardage in. Um, I'm really, really happy with what I was able to get and, like, how little, relatively, I did spend on it, but... I feel like, I feel weird about it, and yeah, so I guess that just leads me into, I'm doing this test knit, and I'm really excited for this pattern, I'm a little intimidated, it's two color brioche, it's got some brioche short rows, which I've, I, first of all, I've done like one two color brioche thing ever. Um, and it was like a coaster. And I don't find it a particularly difficult technique, but the short rows part and like there's also what they're calling syncopated brioche, which I don't know anything about. Um, it's by Pufido Knits. It's called Waterbender. It's a pullover um, and it has this gorgeous, it's up on their Instagram. It's just regular two color brioche for the body. It's like stockinette rib what do we call that and then this really beautiful like 3d textured wide sleeve um and one color dominates on the sleeves and one on the body and so this is my swatch the blue is gonna be for the sleeves um and then this purple is gonna be for the body 
Um, and so the blue, I don't know how well you could see it on the swatch, but it is Silk Garden Sock Solo by Noro. And it reminds me of sea glass with all these little bits. There's like greens and purples, other blues. It's really, really pretty. Um, and I looked at a lot of the colorways in this because regular Silk Garden is like a self-striper. They have the Solo, which comes in solids and also tweeds. And the tweeds have like more variegation. Um, this is one of the solids. This is Abiko. And yeah, it's super pretty. It's a little more thick and thin than I am totally sure of. Um, only because like I had to do an I cord to start. And there are some sections where it's like kind of chunky. So we'll see. It looks okay on the swatch though. I feel like it'll it'll be okay. And then the purple is this um it's Malabrigo Merino Lace. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but this one is from a different dye lot, and um, because I'm holding them two strands together and it's brioche, I'm not like super worried about the dye lot thing, but I'd finally decided on these colors and they send me an email. It's fine though. Um, also interestingly about this color, it's Violetas, which I've used before, like, 10, 11, 12 years ago, when I was in high school, I knit a hat out of it, and it looks very different now. The colorway does not look like it once did. Um, this is much more like a royal purple kind of color, like a little touch of indigo. Um, it's actually very similar to another yarn that I have. <laughs> um, which, like, anyway. Um, yeah, so... That was kind of interesting to see that it that the colorway over time has actually kind of changed from what it used to look like. It was it had it, it was more it was like less saturated and had more blue in it. Um, probably still have scraps somewhere, but yeah, this is I I did the eye cord. This is gonna be for the for the neck and then raglan. Um, I'm very excited for this. A little nervous. It's marked as advanced, which I think I can handle, but also it's, it's a test knit and it, there's just like a little bit of pressure, you know? Um, the other thing that I got, I got two things on big clearance lately. Um, this, I hope I don't regret because it is 100% hemp. And as I mentioned with the Bessie yarn before, like plant fiber is just really hard on the hands. It's very inelastic, but this is 100% hemp. It's in a color called Bordeaux. Um, I think it's super pretty, um, very much my color. And my hope for this is to make uh, a James and Watts look at my holes. Um, I'm hoping that because it's lace, it'll be like not so intense. When I knit the Bessie crop is also like a pretty tight gauge. So I think that this will be nice. And then the other thing I got semi recently, these were on like an amazing clearance, is this like swampy green. Um, it's from Plymouth. It's called Merino Textura. And I was a little unsure if I wanted to get it because it is like, it's 62% superwash merino and 38% non superwash. I've been kind of trying to avoid superwash, but it's this really cool, like, slubby texture. And I got it basically for the texture and the color. I want to make a very simple top and because of the color I really want to put this frog patch on it I'm thinking I'll probably like cut it down so it's just the circle and have that like probably on the chest I'm like really excited to have like a just like froggy t-shirt knit situation um and 
honestly between like okay well first of all yes I know I have like a colored palette uh, but I am really trying to do something that feels complicated which is that I really want to try and embrace knits and yarns that are like more spontaneous more just kind of like curious and joyful and at the same time I'm really concerned about consumption and I'm like trying to curb my consumption and in 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 a way I suppose spinning has kind of been my solution because spinning has allowed me to explore yarn in like a completely new way that is very like strategic and creative and adds like an extra step between me and knitting um, where I have to make the yarn first and I have to like think about that process and the thinking about color distribution is like fascinating to me and like exploring yeah just like texture and fiber preparations and all that kind of thing um it's like really interesting to me um and to me like is also a way of like slowing down like going further back in the process so as to kind of like slow me down and I guess the reason that I'm interested in this kind of, like, curiosity and spontaneity is that, as I kind of said, like, I've, I've really been struggling with my clothes. And I'm a person who doesn't really have that many clothes, all told. Like, and a lot of the things that I do have, I've either made or bought secondhand. Or, in some rare instances, have been, like, gifted from, you know... A person or are picked up at like a clothing swap I don't buy clothes if I can absolutely avoid it um, which is maybe like an an unnecessary restriction but what it has done which is definitely an unnecessary restriction is that it has made me feel that I need to funnel all of my crafting into the clothes on my back <laughs> and realizing that has kind of alerted me that it makes me put a ton of pressure on myself anytime I'm approaching a project that like I can't mess this up or this has to be worth it or whatever because otherwise I don't have this thing to wear um, because and, and and it's not to say that like my basic clothing needs are not met i certainly have things that i can wear um there are some things that i have that are really dysphoric for me or that are physically uncomfortable um especially as i have like begun to actually like attend to my like sensory needs um and like mobility needs more um like the clothes that I, that are comfortable for me to wear like it's not comfort I mean I, I also think that comfort when it comes to clothing should not be an, an add-on kind of thing I think that like almost like first and foremost <laughs> and um like I know my partner has also talked about this but like we've both kind of reached points where like being comfortable is now more important than being hot <laughs> Whereas, like, earlier in our 20s, we would really prioritize hotness. <laughs> and so, like, just trying to figure out, like, now that I'm post-top surgery, my tastes have shifted. I'm making more things by hand and so kind of need those pieces to, like, it's like they matter more because they're going to take longer. So they need to be really important and really central. But it's taken a lot of the, like, 
experimentation, like room to experiment and to explore out of my craft. And I don't like that. And at the same time, I'm also like really scared about like generating unnecessary excess. Like I, I know that it is like best practice to make a muslin and to have to make like a practice version. Um, and I, I really struggle to do because I, I don't know what to do with them afterwards, especially when I make a mistake and it's not wearable or it's, you know, um, or something tears, you know, um, for me, knitting has always been more approachable in that way because yarn can be unraveled and be reworked in a way that, that fabric can't necessarily. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I've been really struggling to like find the slowness and the experimentation and like the joy in my craft at the same time that I'm really trying to like cut back um and so it's just uh it's it's led me to this kind of like interesting place where I now have some things that I really don't want anymore but I don't know what to do with them I don't know if anyone even wants them some things I think it's just like I, I will not make up what I initially spent but at least maybe I can send them on somewhere else and I think that's where I'm headed with a lot of de-stash stuff is like it's not really about re like recouping the money so much as just like I know I'm not going to use this it shouldn't just sit in a bin make me an offer um but yeah I've just been like just thinking <laughs> And thinking about, like I said, like fast fashionification within, within knitting, I think also like to an extent, like it's very interesting to see, um, like class differences in what kinds of crafting and and makes like people are making um and what a privilege it is to be able to do things really slowly and to be able to sometimes like write in these like very reflective ways about things um yeah we don't have the same 24 hours and thinking about how that impacts, you know, who is, who is publishing designs and who isn't and thinking about what collective design might look like or thinking about, um, I talked about this a little bit in my other episode about like, and wrote ultimately in the description about how like, there are two wolves inside. <laughs> like, one of you is trying to survive capitalism, the other one's trying to destroy it. And, like, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. I don't think a lot of us actually do. But, like, that's kind of the path, is to be, like, a self-published designer and be, like, running your own little shop or whatever. And, and like, on one hand... I love that and I, I want everyone to kind of like have that space to be doing their own like unique and and like special work and and things that are very personal um and at the same time I'm very wary of like conceiving of a fiber shed as just being kind of like a blob of small businesses um I've been thinking a lot about and have been in a lot of conversations recently about food autonomy and about what you know collective efforts 
and communal efforts look like in in the directions of food and of medicine and I want to have those conversations around fiber like instead of a bunch of people who who love knitting and who have very similar skill sets like individually doing all of this labor to publish patterns that ultimately share so much like if instead we were contributing to like a communal body of craft knowledge instead of like competing with each other in like this weird instagram market um just like what could all of our like talent and yeah just like creativity and time and skill like what could that be just like always kind of thinking about that um what things look like in like a more collective direction um but and then like in the meantime I'm still trying to figure out what to do with my own shop I recently like downsized it just to get one less bill out of my life um we're back on that that basic tier big cartel now um you know I have some ideas about things that I want to make and like put up for spring or for just whenever they get done um at the same time I'm like I hate having a shop I always try it and I always hate it and I should just stop trying to do it stop trying to make a shop happen um yeah I mean the two wolves are fighting. Um, and I guess I don't have like a logical conclusion to that. It's just like something that I've been thinking about a lot and just trying to like, yeah, trying to, to make my way in this like weird little world and trying to like figure out what to wear every day. <laughs> and yeah and I'm really like always just like so grateful that like there are other little podcasters uh doing the same thing and like honestly the like little queer knitting circle that I'm in is like so nourishing for me <laughs> and yeah I don't know if I have really all that much more to say on the matter I feel like I'm gonna start going in circles if I haven't already but yeah, these are things I've been thinking about. Um, I've been thinking about my relationship with social media. Um, yeah, being off my phone for like a number of days was really good. And at the same time, I also realized that I don't post on Instagram anymore. Like grid post, because I feel like if it doesn't align with this like certain like aesthetic I've crafted for myself, then like it shouldn't be posted and instead I'm definitely reorienting to like um actually this is my social media account and if I want to post <laughs> things for my life I should just do it like instead of being like a hashtag like test knitter um I'm just trying to be I think um everything's very curatorial these days and I don't have any desire to really do that. Um, and so I, I guess in a way, like, I'm hoping to just do more mundane posting at the same time that I'm trying to be on social media less. I guess life is full of contradictions. Um, Gemini placements, much. But, yeah, I think that that's all I have to say, really. Um... I am really excited for a lot of the projects that are coming up. This testnet, I think, is going to be really beautiful. I'm just, like, looking at the, like, very soft sheen on this um, silk garden sock. And, um, yeah, I'm very excited to to pick up stitches along this little eye, car eye cord and get moving. So... Yeah, I guess I'll catch you next time. But thanks for watching, and... Take care. I'll see y'all around.